Hey, there we go. Okay, we got we got sound. Sorry, 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 sorry. I had to reboot. I had to reboot. Let's see. Hey there. Sorry, I had to reboot. And there were a couple people waiting, and I'm sure they got kicked off. It was just spinning. Hey, look at that. 14 people already. <laughs> you were the first testimony too. So we we were talking about uh, we were talking about the the caged method, and uh, again the caged method is is really a way of looking at your fretboard that makes it uh, makes it really kind of opens up your fretboard. To, you start to see patterns a lot more. You start to see um, it's like chains linking, uh, like a loop of chains, and. Um, you know, I'm not sure the best way to teach is if, if this were one on one lesson, um, you know, I would cater it. We would go specifically one, you know, one shape at a time. And since we're talking, it's the caged method. I figure we might as well start on the C shape. OK, so basically, again, the idea is to see um, the C shape up and down the neck and realize again real quick. Just um, I'm going to go fast. Don't worry. Some of you, this is like way over your heads. I always found when I, when I didn't know anything about guitar, um, I would read Guitar Player Magazine cover to cover when I was a kid. And like even the ads I read and literally 90% of it, I did not understand. And then the next episode, it was only like 88% I didn't understand and then 85. So the more you hear something, it's like learning a new language, the more you start to understand it. But um, and I probably, if we're, if this goes on very long, we'll be, I'll be doing different, different, uh, different lessons, but uh, well, no, cage, cage can start on, on C. It doesn't really matter which chord you start on. Um, because if we start on C, we got C here, you know, there's the A shape, there's the G shape, there's the E shape, and there's the D shape. So basically with the, with the C and the reason they did start it on C anyway, was because it spells the word caged. If they started on G, it would have spelled the word Jud. J Jedka, <laughs> and I don't, I don't think anyone would really sign on to learn the Jedka method. So the cage method sounds better. But like for example, the C chord is here. This is also a C chord, but it looks like an A chord. This is also a C chord, but it looks like a G chord. The next C chord looks like an E chord, and the next C chord looks like a D chord. Okay. So if we were to take each one of these shapes and use these three fingers instead, then we can create a chromatic chord that goes up and down the neck. Now, uh, just so you know, I'm wearing the same sweatshirt as I wore yesterday, but I turned it inside out so you wouldn't know I was wearing the same sweatshirt as yesterday. <laughs> so, okay. So <clears throat> basically what I want to do is I want to talk about um, each one of the shapes has a pentatonic scale that goes with it, which is great. Okay. So we're going to talk about the C shape, but we're going to do it in the key of D. Okay. So I'm at the, um, so you may not be able to make this chord, but you should be able to play this pentatonic scale. Um, but the chord is basically, um, it's nothing, and then five, four, two, three, two, boom, like that. That's a D. It's a C shape. I'm typing all this in, and this all does stay, I don't delete the, the uh, thread here. Here's our here's our D D chord. It's a C shape. See, it looks like a C. If I slid it down, it would be a C. C sharp, D. Okay. So the um, the pentatonic scale that goes over this is um, what I would call pentatonic number four. Um, but but that doesn't have anything to do with the, anything. I, that's just how I teach the pentatonics in a certain order. But so basically, we're going to be Sec on the bottom string, second fret, if you've got your guitar out, you can play along with me. Second fret, then fifth fret, and then the next string, second fret, 
fifth fret. Okay, and there's our first note. There's our D. Uh, there's our D. The the five in this chord. Okay, then second fret on the D string. Four on the D string. Second fret on the G string. Uh, fourth fret on the on the uh, uh, G string. And then, then this is the only one we have on the third fret here. And there again, there's our, there's the second finger that's in that shape. Uh, so it's third fret and then fifth fret and top string, we go second fret and fifth fret. Let's go backwards. So that would be five, two. Okay, sorry, five, two, five, Three, four, two, four, two, five, two, five, two. And we're gonna go up again, okay? Second fret, and the, uh, so the the numbers I'm using are referencing the the fret number, okay? But now I'm gonna so we're at the second fret, but now I'm gonna use I'm gonna tell you the finger number. The, this is how I would finger it. Some people may not use their pinky. Um, and that, that may be a little tough down here, way down here at the bottom of the neck, but um, you might be able to get away with it further up easier. But I generally like to keep my pinky in the game because otherwise you're losing 25% of your hand. So first finger, fourth finger, first finger, fourth finger, first finger, third finger, first, third, second, fourth, first, and fourth. And backwards, pinky, index, pinky, middle, ring, index, ring, index, pinky, index, pinky, index. Now, how do you practice these skills? Well, one of the things that you can do is you can just I like coming up with lots of different variations. Um, uh, you know, it, you can do groupings of three. So you go up three notes, starting on the first note of the scale. One, two, three. So if we gave the, the scale the numbers, each note a number, we'd have 12 notes because it's a pentatonic scale. It's um, penta means five, but it, it's two notes per string. We have six strings. Two times six is 12. So... So if we gave um, if you if we gave each one a number one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve, then the way you do groupings of three, for example, well, that's just one type of grouping, is be one two three two three four three. I'm sorry, four three uh, three four five four five six five six seven six seven eight, so on and so forth. That's hard. It's not, there's not a great way to, you know, I've done, you go um, uh, up three and then back one. You can think of it that way. And again, this is the pentatonic scale the major pentatonic scale that's around this D major chord that is a C shape. So we're, again, we're using, we're starting with the, this, the first shape and each one of the shapes, the C, A, G, E, and D, they all have their own pentatonic scale that goes with them. And this is, and this is the one that goes with the C major shape. Okay. So, so this, again, just like the chord, the great thing about guitar is that once you learn something that has no open strings in it, it's hundred percent movable and you've just learned 12 things, okay? So by knowing this scale, and, and what the, the two important notes you wanna see are the, the, the note here, the, so the, the uh, fifth string pinky note, and the second string second finger note, those are both Ds. So you know that whatever note that is, that's what key you're in. So if you put this on E, now you're in E. Okay, and if we move it up a fret, we're in F. If this note is an F, then we're in F. Now, there's lots of things you can do.
to practice it. You can, like I said, the groupings, groupings of three sound like this. Would be this. Now, groupings of four it can be a little difficult because that when you go back to the to the next grouping, I'm on the second uh, finger on the second string. I go back to the first string, same as the first finger. That's not a problem. But then. This is where it gets a little weird. Like here, you got to lay down your third finger to go back to the next string to start the pattern again. And then here, you're going to have to do the same thing. So groupings of four can be a little bit of finger twister. Groupings of five, less so. Um, uh, groupings of five. And then I'm going back to here. Uh, I don't do groupings of five on this pattern very often. And also another thing, like like Eric Johnson would do the groupings of five a lot. Hold on a second, let me do something real quick. Uh, I need to um, put an amp in here. Let's rock the free world, okay? Hopefully this won't be too loud. I don't know if you can hear that in return. It's kind of hissy. I'm going to get rid of some of that hiss by turning up the noise gate. There we go. Uh, you probably, I don't know if you could hear that hiss, but that's a lot of gain. Okay. So, oh, my, my voice is quiet. Okay. Let me bring in the mic a little closer. Sorry, it's going to make some noise while I do this. My goal is to not hit the microphone with my head stuck. Well, now you can't see the guitar. Ugh, I need to wear a head, like a head. Uh, see, I don't know. That maybe is worse. I'm not sure. Well, well this is all a big experiment. <laughs> so, um, like I said, I don't really do groupings of five with that scale very often. Like, but if pentatonic, what I call pentatonic number one, which would be the pentatonic scale based on the G chord, um, is the one that most everybody learns first. Um, and I love the groupings of five because they they kind of have a random feel to it. So if I if I did it with a drummer. Um, sounds random because it's it's a grouping of five all right so let's see sounds uh and i can turn down the guitar a little bit too um so it sounds random uh co you know compared to the to the beat if you're playing five sixteenth notes or five eighth notes or whatever it's going to sound more random which is the cool thing about it now the other thing i do a lot of times with groupings of five instead of going going back oh Oh, you're, you're actually hearing my guitar clean. Interesting. Thanks, Patrick. Um, how do I change that? Well, I don't know how to change that. That's weird because it's, it's being processed here. Oh, because maybe, maybe you're hearing, maybe you're hearing my guitar through the mic. Yeah, maybe. That's fine. I can also use just an acoustic guitar because I know that won't be such an issue. Um, but the, uh, uh, if you do groupings of five, uh, that would be, um, and you know, like in a, in a straight way where you go down, you know, uh, remember my pattern, I was talking about one, two, three, four, five, you know, given the numbers, uh, if I do one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, seven, et cetera. You could do it that way, but you could also do it where you just, and that's why I think Eric Johnson does a few times too. I've heard him do this where he goes groupings of five and then he goes to the, 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 he skips that next note. He goes to this one and it makes it sound like he's going down the scale a lot faster. If you did it, 
doing every grouping. This way, it's kind of doing every group, every other grouping. But you have to do the lay your finger down thing, which is a more of a technique thing. So again, getting back to our pentatonic uh, shape over the pentatonic scale over the C shape, and we're doing a D chord here. I can put my mic back this way now. Um, if I'm going to use acoustic, all right. Um, so let's go over. Let's do it again together, um, and we'll just do, we're just going to play straight down and back up. Okay, second fret. Fifth fret, second, fifth, second, fourth, second, fourth, third, fifth, second, and fifth. And then backwards, five, two, five, three, okay, and then, uh, sorry, four, two, brain fart, four, two, five, Two, five, two. Patrick, you always want to take lessons from me, right? <laughs> it's like we're having a lesson right now. That's what I try to create in my in my videos. And when I do, uh, you know, my YouTube videos, I really do, I don't do a lot of editing. I don't cut out every um and every brain fart. You know, if I sit there for a second, going like, uh, I may cut that out. So if you see a little, but I I don't like videos where they're constantly cutting. Or I don't even, not even fan of videos that has like seventeen different angles of the same thing um so uh so you're gonna you're gonna when you get when you watch my videos and especially right now see i need to look in a mirror before i do this when you when you watch these you're getting me as i this is pretty much how i taught lessons when i taught for 35 years so okay hey pepper so you can you can try to get this Basically, what you want to do is get the scale down under muscle memory, okay? And again, the two most important notes in that scale are the pinky note on the fifth string and the second finger note on the second string. Those are your major roots for the, the, the scale, okay? So if we're playing in, in you say, pick a key. Uh, somebody pick a key. Give me a key. Uh, come on. Come on. Everybody's got guitars in their hands. They can't type. <laughs> Homework break. Sorry. <laughs> D. That's the key I'm already in. Give me a different key. Harry, you're paying attention though. <laughs> so C, okay, uh, F, let me, okay, Patrick, F is a good one. Okay, so let's go to the B string. That's the B string because it's a B note when you play it open. B to C is a half step. So there's C, C to D is a whole step. There's D, D to E is a whole step. So there's E, E to F is a half step. Okay, B, C, is a half step, EF is a half step. BC as in before Christ, EF as in EF Hutton, which nobody knows the term EF Hutton anymore. But when I was teaching as kids back in the day, that's how I'd get them to remember. So F is here. So we put our second finger here on F and this is our, now we're playing that, that, that C shape pentatonic scale here, uh, here at, in the key of F. If we wanted to go to G, yeah, then we would just go up here. And at the same time, when you're playing the scale, practice seeing the chord shape there, okay? Because um, going back to Pat's F here, we see that as an F chord. Yum. You can see that little, it looks like a D chord, but it's really this part of the C chord, okay? It's really part of the, the C chord, and you can just see it, and you'll start to see little chord shapes. You have a little triad here, okay? You're going to start to learn chord shapes up and down the neck because you're learning the caged method. You're, and we're starting with C, and I could... And I've got videos. Um, I'm going. To, I've got a playlist dedicated just to the Cajun method, and you can go back and watch old videos that I did. Um, uh, what is it? What is the tab for? <laughs> I don't have tab. Sorry. Oh, as far as the numbers go, um, I'm, that might be up on my. I, it's been so long since I did mo most of those caged videos, um, but I talk about it. I I think I give an overview. I give one. Uh, I think there's a video on each of the the shapes. 
Um, I think I do. I did a series for a while where I was doing licks in uh, different shapes. So, for example, like uh, we're back in D here. OK, C shape. So when I'm there, you know, when I, I have certain licks that I like to do in this shape. And then I might well, very likely might go right up into another shape. So when I'm when I'm soloing, I'm not really staying in one shape. I'm kind of moving around from one shape to the other, wherever the melody and wherever my hands and my head and my heart takes me. So, for example, if I'm playing in D, you know, it's like now I'm in the A shape up here. Now I'm in the G shape. Now I'm in the E form shape. Whatever, I'm just kind of farting around, but basically I'm moving through the shapes as I go on. I didn't even do the D shape one, but um, the, which would have been way up here or down here. Okay, but yeah, so so basically that's the, the advantage to kind of learning the caged method. It really opens up your fretboard, helps you start to see patterns, um, and ultimately you want to play music. Um, but uh, it, I, I don't know that this is going to help, but I can write out the kind of the, the numerology here. It's two, five, this is a uh, frets, two, five, two, five, two, four, two, four, three, five, two, five, right? Yeah. I, that doesn't look like a scale to me, <laughs> so I'm not sure if that really helps. Uh, I wish I could drop JPEGs in there. I don't think I, I can't do that. Um, but that would also mean I'd have to do all this prep work, and I'm just like, I'm way too lazy <laughs> to do that. So uh, if we were sitting in the lesson, I'd be writing stuff down. And, I, you know, I can hear I can I can do that right now. What time is it? I got about another five minutes and then I'll take some questions for a minute, too. And then uh, so let's see if I can make this big enough so it'll actually. show up here i made it i didn't make it enough frets i got my nice pencil and then when i hold this up you guys can all do a screenshot and i don't think i get a notification if you or anything like that that you did that but um all right all right you ready there it is is it backwards <laughs> so screenshot and then inverted or whatever yeah, don't forget to hit the like button. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Pepper. There you go, Pepper. You got it now. And that's, like I said, the beauty of guitar is that, you know, piano players have it tough. They have to learn to scale each, you know, each each place. You know, they have to learn every scale is a different fingering and pattern and everything. Um, but guitar, the downside to guitar is you have to make the note. Piano, it's already made for you. You just have to hit it. My friend Michiko Hill, who's a great piano player, she says, even a cat can play piano, <laughs> but, but I, um, uh, but on guitar, you actually have to make each note, but the advantage is that we can just move. Oh, no. You can move it and it's a different key. So we got uh, E. So this would be E flat. And now we're going to E. And again, just, just get out your mathematician hat, you know, and start doing some variations. Like, for example, uh, you know, you can just, you know, like, you know, like I said, one, two, three, two, three. You, I, I love string skipping. String skipping is one of my favorite things to do. So you can take the scale. Now I might not do it that way. I might go to the to the C sharp and get that seventh. But isn't that cool sounding? Uh, when I do it right, I'm used to doing it on electric. Or I can go. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm playing the uh, second fret of the fifth string, the fifth fret of the fifth string. Then I'm skipping down to the third string and playing the second fret of the third string, fourth fret of the third string. So I'm just basically, and then the first uh, string, I'm playing the second fret and fifth fret. So real slow. 
And it just sounds like, it almost sounds like an arpeggio, a chord being played. I just like, I love the string skipping element of it. I love the, 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 the fact that, okay, that's a minor third, but then here we have a fifth and then a minor, a major second, and then we have another fifth. Those are intervals you wouldn't normally play. So by just, you could just string skipping, you can, um, just by uh, skipping strings, you can make it sound like something completely different. It sounds like you're not even in the same, you know, in a key. And then you can turn in pattern like this. Say I do a pattern. start making up patterns another one that i like to do which is really hard is to go so i'm going uh, uh five five that and then i'm doing two three basically doing kind of like fourths almost not quite fourths. So that's a fourth this is a third this is a fourth 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 but it also has kind of a jazzy sound And these are all, pen this is all just one pentatonic scale. Um, although when I added that C sharp, I kind of brought in one of the, one of the major elements. Oh. And so, um, oh no, I don't want that. I want it off. Bye. I set an alarm. I set an alarm for the wrong time. <laughs> okay. So that's, uh, uh, let's see. Is it, yeah, it's 1130. All right. So I was a little late, so I'll go a little bit longer, but um, uh, so there's, our C shape. And there's one, you know, there's one scale over that. Now, uh, what I might do uh, I'll, tomorrow, what I'll do is I'll probably, I'll do the diatonic scale for the C shape. Um, and then maybe even I'll do the major scale, a diatonic major scale, and um, I'll do uh, mixolydian. Because because if you find yourself playing over a D7, like in a blues context or D7 or whatever, um, also, I might talk about doing the minor pentatonic over that. Where's the minor pentatonic lay uh, fall on your hand? Okay. And again, remember, all of this is completely movable. So you can do this in any key. And I would suggest practicing. Now, you don't necessarily, if you're, say, if you're practicing the groupings of, you know, groupings of three. It also is a great opportunity to work on your alternative, al alternating picking on your right hand. Um, but you can go ahead and go up a fret and keep going up and keep going up because you want to get your hands used to playing in tight little places too. Um, you, you know, so many players practice in here and then when they get up here, they kind of like don't play as well. And especially it's not so much true on acoustic, but a special on electric bending, the, the strings bend differently up high than they do down low. And so a lot of times players tend to go sharp when they bend up high. So, um, uh, so yeah, Hill, Hill McNamara, you can put a link in there. I think what? Oh, oh, Instagram. He did it on Instagram. Uh, this is a. Oh, sorry. This is a Taylor. And this is an eight fourteen um, C E. The C stands for cutaway, and the E stands for the fact that it's got a pickup in it. Um, it's from 97, so it's not the it's not the system they have now where they got the, the volume controls on the guitar. Um, this is an older one. Um, and I got it new uh, when I was teaching clinics for, for Taylor. So oh, I was teaching clinics for Maranatha Music, but Taylor was one of the sponsors. So I um, always like to tell about the guitars, though. I don't, you know, I'm like, I, you know, the wood stuff, I don't know that as much. I know the spruce top um, rosewood fingerboard, but... Um, I'm, it's, I'm pretty pathetic about that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, I have a lot of Fenders. Yeah. Oh, acoustic. No, I don't have any Fender acoustics. Yeah, let me uh, let me see real quick if I can. Uh, I'll find the um, playlist uh, for um, my channel. Open my channel. Uh, hopefully, it'll probably will play a video here in a second. Okay, good. Oh, it says I'm live now. Oh, man, I got to go check me out. Um, playlists. Um, see, oh, I wish it was beautiful. No, uh, playlist. 
All playlists. Yeah. Okay. Come on, just give me a list of my playlists. I hate to have to do it this way. Oh my gosh. This is not what I want. All right. Ah, stop. Go away. <laughs> created playlists. I see. I want to separate like the public and the private because I got like home repair ones and stuff. All right. So where is the cage method playlist? I'm going to put a link. Ah, so let's see. How many less, how many videos do I have on this? No, that's not right. I never wonder why so many people say they want to go away. Guitar, but... View full playlist theory lessons and the cage method. Okay. So I guess I have it just in random. Yeah. Some of these are really old and I have intro to modes in here. Yeah, they're, wow, these are really old. You can totally see different, you see we're in our apartment and uh, uh, different hair, and <laughs> my hair is really long. Someone, I got the best comment I ever got. Okay, so I can actually share this page here, copy. Uh, the best comment I ever got. Here we go, boom. So there's the playlist. So go, go crazy on that. I'd be thrilled because you get my spin counts up. I love that. Um, that all helps. Trust me. You know, if, if you're curious, I think it's generally anywhere from like a, a fifth to a, a third of a penny per spin. If there's an ad, sometimes there's more if there's like banner. I don't I don't usually put the um, uh, banner ads. I, I mute those. So because I'm losing money, but I also don't want you to have to hit the X because that's where my fretboard is. So it's like, well, why would I put an ad blocking the very thing you're turning, tuning into the video to see? So that's kind of what I do. So, um, and then um, can I make a Discord server? That would be really cool. What is that? That sounds like something you would know how to do. <laughs> uh, you, hey, what time is it there, uh, Abishai? We're, you're in uh, Sweden, right? Are you in Sweden? Is that am I mixing you up with someone else? Oh, a gamer chart. Uh, um, you know, the one th one thing I've talked about, thought about doing is is maybe doing a Twitch thing um, where I'm I'm not actually talking so much to the camera as much as I'm just running it while I'm writing music. Uh, but it wouldn't be writing music for pop artists, obviously. It would be writing music for TV um, TV shows. I work for a lot of different shows like on Discovery and things like that. So I write music for a lot of shows, you know, and um, and that's not really anything where I'm worried about someone like going, hey, I heard that before I, you know, heard that. So, yeah. So I thought about, I have a Twitch account. Um, I've been, I've been bookmarking some people. I don't see anybody doing what I'm doing um, and I would not be playing covers or anything like that. It wouldn't be anything like that. So, okay. 6.30 in the peak in the UK. Yep. And UK is pretty much one time zone. I'm assuming that maybe Ireland has a different one. Um, okay, so let's see. Game of Thrones. Last time I used it, I fried my computer. Oh my gosh! Uh, in Alabama, yay! Uh, let's see. All right, so so check out those. And I still don't know what song uh, you're talking about. As far as the Bieber, was it on his Instagram or was it on his stories? Um, somebody. Anyway, <laughs> you guys doing good? Got my coffee. Take care of yourselves. Uh, I just read yesterday that they're opening 90% of the Starbucks in China back up. Um, and I think China, uh, Shanghai Disneyland's opening it back up. So uh, they're on the other end of this. They're on the back end of this. We're, uh, we're still on the climbing end of it. But uh, okay, I'll check it out right now. Thanks, Hill McMurray. Um <laughs> You're dying, aren't you? Okay, so is it, is it on his stories? Because I do follow him. He doesn't follow me, that brat. Where is it? 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 Just to be, is it on his stories or is it on his? Yeah, I saw the intention. That Josh recorded that. That wasn't me. I probably won't do any. Yeah. No, that's just, that's not me. I'm going to get in trouble if I have that on because it's going to go through here and they're going to say, they're going to give me a strike. I don't want that. Um, so um, did he do, if he put something up, you know, on Instagram, um, I'll, I'll find it, but I don't see anything up there right now. So it's on his actual account over, over the, on the thumbnail of people pushing the car over. Weird. 
Are you sure it's his account? Sorry, this is great, uh, great cinema, isn't this? <laughs> wow, this is exciting TV. You're like, yes, <laughs> screw CNN. I'm going to watch Tom look at his phone. <laughs> this is like, what are we doing here? Okay, so, but it, it will be interesting if it's, okay, I see the picture of him with the doctors. Um, okay, let me just go to his account. Oh, weird. There's, okay, I didn't see this. One. Um, no, that's that's the story. That's the seasons. It's not the season snippet, is it? No, that's that's that. <laughs> well, that's true. CNN's ratings are in the tank, aren't they? Uh, flipping the car. Oh, that one. Oh, yeah. No, that's not me. You know, that sounds like. Yeah, well, you know what? People are going to want that one to come out. But yeah, I, I that one I don't. Uh, that sounds like the, the song. Uh, it's towards the end of the record. I think track 14 or whatever. Um, I can't think of the name of it right now. But it kind of sounds like the same guitar tone as, as that. Uh, similar anyway. And that may be his guitar player. Um and I think they suspended rehearsals because the show is getting pushed back like everything else is getting pushed back. Hopefully we'll start playing uh, baseball at some point this year. Um, but uh, yeah, you're in your studio too. Yep. And I'm, I'm going to be working too. I'm working on, a, uh, I was telling you yesterday, I was playing uh, some piano uh, on a, on a, And this is like totally legit. My mom brought this back, like when I was in high school from from uh, Africa. Um, she went she went to Africa and she brought a bunch of stuff for us. Really, really cool. Um, and yeah, kalimba, and uh, also kayamba. She brought one of these back, and I didn't know what this was. I'm like, it's kind of like a rain stick. It's probably really loud, but it actually plays like this and uh, like tapped or something. I don't know. I was playing it on a, a soundtrack. Exactly. Um, I was playing it on a, a soundtrack yesterday and, and I was doing this and I was like, it was like, oh man, this is a serious core workout. <laughs> I, I, it was like a five minute cue or something. I was trying to go the entire length of the cue and I had to keep stopping because I was just getting out of time because I was getting like, oh, it's like a workout. So I'm like, I'm going to do another live stream in an hour of just uh, percussion instrument workouts. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to yell at you, hit it hard, hard. So anyway, yeah. So this is a Kayamba. So I actually got, he loved what I did. So I, that I got that on the soundtrack too. So now my IMDB credits are only going to get funny, you know, weirder. Yeah. Cats are looking. Yeah. Right. It's like, what the heck is that? I see my cat runs out of the room when she hears that thing. So um, also I've got a video dropping today at two my time. So in a little over two hours, it's a video of how to string a high strung, what string gauges to use. Um, I'm uploading a video or I'm finishing editing a video where I, I did a review of that Harmony Bobcat back there, which is kind of a cool, very low quality vintage instrument. It's a 60s instrument. I think I paid 375 or 350 for it. Probably in, back in the day, I don't. I think they were like $80 or something. Um, and it's kind of a cool guitar. The reason I bought it, I say this in the video, but I'm telling you now, so you don't have to watch the video. Uh, what am I doing? Um, is is it because it has fo uh, foil pickups or gold foil pickups or whatever. They don't have to be gold. But I didn't have any guitars. It's like the pickups are made by Day Armand. And I, I didn't have any guitars that had those pickups. You know, I had humbuckers and single coils and lipstick. And I had um, uh, soap bar, those, the, the, the uh, Epiphone there, the one that my daughter did the design work on. Uh, that has soap bar. I have a, I have a, a, a PR, Paul Reed Smith that has uh, soap bars in it. And um, they, uh, um, uh, so the gold foil pickups, I didn't have any guitars with that. So that's kind of why I, I do that. So also 
I think tomorrow I'm drop. There's gonna. I already said it to drop. I'm so sorry. I I really want. I really love it when you hit the bell. But I also know that if I post too many videos, you will turn off the bell and you will unsubscribe. Um, but uh, the um, uh, and I'll answer that question here in a second. Although you know I can go for hours, <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I apologize if I do too many videos. I'm trying to do one a week, post one, just one a week, so you're not getting too many notifications. Um, but I also noticed there's a need for more jam tracks. So I did a bluegrass 100 beats per minute in D this time. We were speaking of the key of D. We were just jam. So you can take the scale that we learned today and you can practice over the jam track that I created. Um, and I think that's going to drop... I, I tried to set it so it didn't, I think it's after midnight on Friday or something like that. So there'll be a jam track. Uh, and again, I apologize. I noticed one time I dropped five videos in one day, just I, I scheduled them all to drop in one day and I lost like a hundred subscribers. And I understand that because you just don't want uh, notifications clogging everything. And so I try not to over subscribe. Um, gosh, that's crazy. Tim Pool makes that many. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I I think this is going to be good because I think already I saw that we had at uh, when I shut this off, I'll know the peak, but I, th I, the highest number I saw up there was 36 and yesterday the highest number was 32. So if I'm consistent with this and I hope to be, I should be able to be, I'm stuck. Where, what else am I going to do? Right. Um, so, and then you were asking me, uh, how did you, how did I, uh, Brett, Brett, uh, Bent Rossum, you were asking me, how did I get my start in soundtrack work? Um, Yes, I have videos on the subject. So if you go through my videos, if you're interested in the business of music, I would seriously watch my, I mean, I just tell everybody, you know, all the kids that come to me, I want to do what you do. How do I do? Uh, I have plans for, I have titles for 70 video, 70 more videos. Um, let me pull up this playlist and send you a link. But it's the business of making music. Where is that? It should be right at top. It probably is. I'm just looking right past it. Uh, oh, here it is. Yeah. View, view full playlist. Okay. Here's the sharing here, copying the link, sending the link. Okay. So this playlist is for anyone, you know, that plays any interest in, instrument. Okay. Or they want to be a singer or they want to be a songwriter or record producer or, or anything. It may, a lot of this stuff even applies to anything in the arts or any profession. But I think there are almost 20 videos up there now. Everything like, should I go to college? Um, should I learn to read music? Uh, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I talk about it. So I intent, my whole reason to moving to LA was to do soundtrack work, to work on TV shows and movies. And I wanted to be Tommy Tedesco and, and Steve Lukather and Larry Carlton and Jay Graydon and and Lee Rittenauer and all the guys that were doing records and sessions and everything. Hey, Kathy, you caught You're on. I'm about ready to sign off. <laughs> Sorry. I should be here tomorrow. Same time though. Yeah. You're a little late too, Michael. Um, but so th that playlist um, that I, I just posted right there, that is for anyone, you know, that's like thinking about going into the business. Um, I'm hoping that too much of the world doesn't shift, but one of the great things about my work is now I do it almost all from home. So the so work from home for me is not really an issue. And because people are stuck at home, I think there's really a voracious appetite for not only uh, TV shows and movies, but games too. So, and I do a lot of gaming, but yesterday I was working on a documentary uh, that took, takes place in Africa. That's why I was using the uh, thumb piano. And it's like, he didn't even know I played thumb piano, but I, I said, well, he said, do you have any stringed instruments from Africa? And I, I couldn't think of any. Uh, it's mostly percussion instruments from Africa. And so I said, but I have some percussion instruments. And he said, well, would you play them? And I said, sure. So that's why, uh, so that's why I'm playing that. But um, yeah, so I really worked on my reading. I worked on playing in lots of different styles before I even moved to California. Once I got to California, I really kept a practice regimen where I was constantly um, learning. Um, I went through a period of about 10 years where I bought a new instrument every year and tried to learn it like mandolin ukulele, lap steel, and all of those instruments now are in pretty, pretty solid rotation. Um, I'll show you an instrument that I don't know if you guys have seen yet. I haven't done a review of it. I should totally do a review of it, although I'm not really a, an Irish bazooki player.
Kathy, I've had this up before, right? It's, I, I'm basically kind of using it as a bass mandolin. It's an octave below a mandolin, except these two strings are tuned to D instead of E. Um, yeah, you know, hundred dollar acoustic that'll that'll get the job done. Uh, the biggest problem with cheap acoustics is the action is going to be really high. Uh, you can put electric strings if you want to go with a light electric set on it on, an, on a crappy acoustic. That uh, if you're not really too worried about the neck, but it'll make it easier to play. So, um, oh hey yeah bet yeah so um, yeah and you know it's it's there are. There's so many people doing movies and everything like that. I mean, I'm working with some pretty amazing composers. Um, and uh, like I did, you know, I'm working with Steve Jablonski and we, he does all the, uh, I played on the last Transformers movie. Uh, but I, in fact, if you want to watch or something, you want to hear me play guitar, you can watch Spencer Confidential on, Am on Netflix. That's new uh, Mark Wahlberg movie. Uh, Post Malone's in it too. But I played guitars on that movie. Uh, that's up now. Um, that dropped last week. So you can watch that. Um, <laughs> well, good. See, now you're learning how to adjust the truss rod, Verdi. So Verdi's saying, I, I, had to, I have to adjust the truss rod. That's okay, because that's that's a good skill. That'll save you from having to go to a, a guitar uh, technician. So this is called an Irish bazooki. And it's eight strings, but it's, eight, it's four courses. So it's basically octaves, unison, unison. So, uh, so, so there's a G chord there. It's tuned to G, um, G D A D. If it were tuned like a if it was tuned like a, an octave below a mandolin, that would be E. But this, this string was really tight. I don't want to raise it. I know it would break. So I've got to get uh, lighter, lighter strings for this, for the, for these top two strings, because that way I can. Although I kind of dig the tonality of this, it's almost a dad gaddy kind of sound. Um, it's like a, it's, what did I say? G D A D. So it's good dad. <laughs> so. Oh, does he play this? I know he plays lute. That's pretty crazy. I have a lute. So anyway, on that note, uh, it's different than it's a little bit different than a Greek bazooki. Yeah, I, I I need to get a Greek bazooki too. I don't have one of those. I saw some at Nam, and um, uh, it's got the round back. Um, I think the tuning actually generally on a Greek bazooki, they were they were showing me at Nam show. They were tuned like the top four strings of a guitar, uh, maybe up a fourth. So kind of like, you know, instead of uh, D, G, B, E, it would be uh, G, C, E, A. Um, and then so so the guitar chords, you know, small top four string guitar chords would work on it. Um, I would and, and it would be easy to play scales on because I already know how to play it. So that's, I think, generally how it's tuned. But um, yeah, it's definitely th this is flat back. Um, the this also has a deeper sound to it, but it may be just because it's lower. Most most Greek bazookis I've heard kind of have a, a brighter, uh, thinner sound, which is kind of what you want from that. Because I, I couldn't use this to if somebody said, hey, you play Greek bazooki I, on a soundtrack, I couldn't pull this one out. It wouldn't sound right. Um, but. Uh, uh, yeah, Phil X. Oh, Phil, who's Phil X? I don't know Phil X. Do I know Phil X? Um, I actually got a contact. I, I, I somewhere I've got his card. Right here, from the Nam Show, which wouldn't have a Nam Show right now. Oh my gosh! Oh, so anyway, God bless you guys. I'll see you tomorrow, uh, eleven o'clock my time. So that's Pacific Standard Time, three or two o'clock on the East Coast. Eleven would be approximately probably seven o'clock in UK. I don't know Australia. If anybody's up at this time, I'm missing the Australia peeps. Oh, John Shanks. I know John. Oh, okay. Oh, Phil plays. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I know John Shanks. I don't know Phil. John, I've known for a long time. And uh, say, yeah, you guys say safe too. I really, uh, it's great. This is great therapy for me to kind of get in front of people and talk. And 
I'm such a people person and I really kind of miss it. So uh, you're, you're helping me a lot. And uh, what time is it for me now? It's 1153. So I went 53 minutes <laughs> for, for my 30 minute lesson, but I stopped the lesson at 30 minutes and then we're just chatting now. But uh, anyway, I'll talk to you later. Uh, oh, I'm sure he's a great player. I'll talk to you guys later. God bless you. Thanks again for watching. And uh, let's, uh, let's do this again tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye.